In a second, our lives can turn upside down. We can get sick, lose our jobs and earnings, suffer an employment injury, or live with a disability. Women need medical care and income security when they are pregnant and give birth. Families need financial support in the context of caring for children or when their income earner providing for the family dies. As we get older and retire, we will rely on our pensions to sustain our livelihoods. At times like these, in the absence of social protection to ensure income security and health care, the consequences are devastating. Worryingly, more than half of the world's population still lacks access to social protection, and for many more, the available protection is not adequate. Building social protection system is a long-term process. There is no one-size-fits-all model. Countries should use the optimal mix of mechanisms, schemes and benefits best suited to their own circumstances. They can rely on the guidance of ILO social security conventions and recommendations to reach this objective. These standards, which are the result of tripartite negotiations and represent a balanced approach between the concerns of governments, employers and workers, not only guide countries to build comprehensive social protection systems, but also have become the yardstick against which national legislation on social protection can be assessed. Although there are several ILO standards dealing with social security, there is only one holistic international treaty setting the minimum standards of social security which countries can ratify and be held accountable to uphold, the Convention No. 102 on Minimum Standards of Social Security. Since 1952, Convention 102 establishes the core elements of the architecture of national social security systems and the minimum benchmarks against which to measure the state of development of national social protection systems, for example, whether they provide adequate benefits and are financed in a sustainable manner. Convention number 102 specifies what situations national social protection systems should protect us against and what red lines are not to be crossed. It is the only international treaty that encompasses the full range of circumstances in which we will need medical care and income security. It defines nine contingencies that people may face throughout the life cycle, namely ill health necessitating medical care and the resulting suspension of earnings, unemployment, maternity, work accidents or diseases, old age, disability, death of the family income earner, as well as support for families with children. Of course, many national social protection systems are yet to provide for all contingencies. Convention number 102 therefore allows countries to ratify it if they can commit to provide protection in at least three contingencies. They can subsequently expand their international obligations as their system develops and extend protection for other contingencies. Convention number 102 establishes minimum benchmarks against which to measure each benefit, indicating who should be protected, what the minimum level of the benefit should be based on the level of earnings in each country, what the acceptable conditions are to receive the benefits, how long the benefit should be provided, and in which circumstances the benefit should be provided. These minimum benchmarks need to be predictable and based on entitlements established by law. Countries at all levels of economic development can ratify Convention No. 102. They can temporarily meet lower thresholds, namely for the portion of persons covered or the scope of benefits and duration. This makes for tailored guidance and attainable stepping stones on the way to progressively reaching the minimum protection levels established by Convention No. 102. Convention No. 102 also recognizes that social protection systems can be organized through different mechanisms. As such, it provides different benchmarks for contributory or social insurance schemes and for non-contributory tax finance programs. While no two social protection systems are alike, it is among Convention No. 102 strength that, based on core principles, it provides a roadmap for any country to build and extend their social protection system to cover more people in the event of the nine life contingencies thereby progressively ensuring adequate income security and access to healthcare. These principles comprise the general responsibility of the state for properly and competently administering the system and guaranteeing both the financial sustainability and the provision of adequate benefits, notably by requiring actuarial valuations be carried out 
periodically to guarantee the financial viability and sustainability of the various schemes. Also, Convention number 102 sets the principle of mandatory affiliation. Voluntary insurance mechanisms can be used exceptionally so long as they effectively provide coverage to large parts of the workforce, are supervised by public authorities or administered jointly by workers and employers. They cannot be used to provide protection in case of employment injury, family benefits or maternity cash benefits. Another principle of Convention 102 concerns the financing of social protection. Convention 102 stipulates that social security schemes should be funded collectively by contributions or taxation or a combination of both, thereby excluding direct employer liability schemes for the provision of benefits. Employer liability schemes are therefore not compatible with Convention number 102. Collective financing is an important means to guarantee solidarity in financing through risk pooling for both workers and employers and also ensure non-discrimination in employment, such as, for example, discrimination against women in the case of maternity. Also, cash benefits must be paid periodically, thus excluding lump sum payments in order to ensure adequate protection so long as needed. Social insurance schemes must ensure that the share of contributions borne by workers in a given year never exceeds 50% of the total resources of the scheme, including those used to cover the cost of administration. Importantly, Convention number 102 also requires that the payment of social security contributions does not create hardship for persons living with low incomes. And finally, Convention number 102 establishes the principle of recourse to complaint and appeal mechanisms. This is to allow people access to accountability mechanisms as regards their eligibility to benefits and also the quantity and quality of those benefits. It is not a surprise then that Convention 102 is the most widely recognized up-to-date international social security convention. In 2012, the Social Protection Floors Recommendation No. 202 strongly reaffirmed Convention No. 102's continued relevance as a reference in designing and progressively implementing universal social protection systems as a core component of the social contract and social justice. That is why its ratification and its implementation are actively supported by ILO's tripartite constituents, namely governments, workers and employers. That's also why the ILO continues to provide technical assistance to guide countries in achieving universal social protection based on Convention Number 102 and subsequently adopted social security standards. For more, access the toolkit on ILO social security standards.